Now this little girl here, she's molted twice in one month. She's been chowing down crickets and she is just ginormous. This is again Michigan's largest spider and she has three and a quarter inch leg spread from front leg to hind leg when they're spread out. So this is one big girl and she just molded so she's sporting her new colors and pattern. Looks pretty nice. And the molting process has been completed. The new emerging a larger spider is in the center of the screen and the shed exoskeleton is behind the spider right there. The spider will now dry out, relax, rest. It's a lot of work to go through a molting and this is the spider's most dangerous time. I removed the crickets that she had in the container here because they could kill the spider. No eating yet for a few days. Her fangs have to harden. These spiders are very fast. In good eyesight. And I'm just excited to uh, have this girl here winterizing with me because uh, I didn't see one of these spiders all summer. So I'm very pleased to have this eight-legged creature winterizing with me in the house. However, she's going to eat me out of, well, she's going to keep me busy delivering crickets to her, let me put it that way, <laughs> which is fine. This black disc there that's in the corner of the habitat provides her with a little hiding space because these particular spiders enjoy hiding in dark spots. So I want to give her a corner there, and there she is underneath there, enjoying the darkness of her habitat. And of course now I've opened it up to the light. Oh, and she's been eating quite well. She is a very good size spider. All right, let's see if we can put this down without her running off. I'm trying to find some place to hide. Well, I guess she's gonna come right over and just visit me. Aha, she's touched the warm hand. She's trying to decide if she likes it. So far, so good. But she's not quite so sure about it because she's kept three other legs back on the screen and the lower part of her abdomen not is on the hand here so we'll see if she decides it might be good or not for herself. Oh, she's making the move. So she must like the feeling of the warm hand. I would say this is the largest spider I've ever had in captivity. True spider, that is. I do have a curly-haired tarantula, Honduras, um, variety, um, which is huge, about the size of my hand or palm. Uh, but this girl is right up there with being a true spider, that is. True spiders being how they maneuver their jaws at least by definition.
She seems content to be on my shirt anyway. There's a lot of good grabbing threads there with the little hook claws on the tips of her toes, or her feet. And it's not quite as warm as my direct skin contact. So she seems to be content to sit there for a little bit. To give you an idea of her size, if I put her on the top of the 60 watt light bulb, her legs would spread over the whole top of the bulb and drape over the side. Well, she's made her way back to my warm hand and she pauses check out the temperature change she decides it's okay to proceed oh, this is an amazing spider at least for me and uh, well when a spider takes up the good size of your palm in your hand that's a good size spider Just checking on the girl this morning, seeing how she's doing. She's doing quite well. I believe uh, over the last several weeks with this spider, she potentially has become accustomed to me. Uh, I know she can see well, and maybe, I don't know exactly how this all works in a spider's mind, but anyway, I think she maybe trusts me. Um, she doesn't run from me. She's not skittish uh, like she was initially. And I do a little strange thing, at least you might find it strange. I uh, blow a little warm air on her <laughs> when I approach her. And I think she's uh, become used to that and sees it as maybe some kind of a signal that this big thing approaching me is okay. So. She's uh, grooming herself a little bit with her pedipalps this morning. I'll give you one last look, and then uh, we'll check back a little later.